What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna continue our series on great SketchUp extensions for architecture. If you remember last week, we started this series with 1001-bit tools. We're gonna to keep going this week with an extension that makes it easy to drop things on terrains inside of SketchUp. So I've also created a brand new guide, the 20 best extensions for architecture that I've made available for free on my website. And you can check that out by visiting the SketchUp essentials.com slash architecture extensions. So um, if you want to get the entire list, including links to download, um, things like that, make sure you check that out today. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this week's extension is called Drop GC. Um, this extension is designed to take objects like this tree and allow you to drop them down so that they intersect with a irregular terrain like something that you've created with sandbox tools. So you can download this extension by visiting the SketchUp extension warehouse and looking for Drop GC. And this extension has been put on the 3D warehouse by the Smustard team. So you can find that, download that, and install that from the SketchUp extension warehouse. I will also link to that in the notes down below. Or if you download the architecture extensions guide, the links are all contained in there as well. So one thing I really like about this extension is it's really simple. And so basically the way that it works is you take an object and let's say that we have a number of different trees in here. So we'll make a couple different copies. So let's say we had four copies of this tree here and then we had another row of the trees here. Well what this extension does is this would take all of the objects that we select. So in this case if I click and drag across these trees and then I use the extension drop GC. I just go into extensions and click on drop GC. That's gonna drop those down inside of your model until they intersect with whatever face is beneath them. So this could be really, really useful for placing objects on top of terrains because otherwise you'd have to take these and you'd have to take each one of them and lower this down manually and kind of place this on here and then you'd have to do it again and again and again and that could just get really tedious and time consuming and then you might run into issues like that one where you don't necessarily get it on there it is a lot faster to just do this this way and so one nice thing about this is this would actually allow you if you wanted to to take all of your objects like this and let's say you had multiple different trees and you had a flat floor plan. Well, you could actually use that flat floor plan to place these wherever you wanted them to be. And then you could just come in here and you could hide that. So you could just double click in here and hide it. And then you could select all of these trees and go ahead and drop them on your 3D terrain. So you could use this to place all of these in two dimensions and then from there, drop them in three dimensions. And so this will also work with 3D trees. So all of these trees I've downloaded from SketchUp's collections on the 3D warehouse. But you can see if I was to take these trees and select them and drop them in here, these actually have 3D geometry in here. They're not just the 2D face me components. Um, but you can see I can take these and I can drop these along that terrain really easily. And so one thing you might be wondering is what happens if you have some trees like these over here that aren't actually over a terrain? at all. So let's say that we were to select all of these and we wanted to drop these down. Well for the ones that aren't on the terrain, if there's no intersection, drop GC just won't drop them. Meaning it kind of checks to make sure that these are going to intersect with something before moving them. So you can just kind of randomly place a bunch of trees up here and not have to worry about what happens to the ones that aren't over a surface. And then the last thing I want to point out is if you take a look at these trees, so if we look at our, if we get a view, hidden geometry, then we double click inside of our trees, what you're going to notice is this is just dropping these until the object origin or the axis intersect point intersects with something inside of your model. So you can see how for this one, if we kind of rotate down, you can see how this just moves this axis down until this intersects with something. Um, so that's kind of how this is finding where these are placed inside of your inside of your um, model. So like for example, if I take this box over here, you can see this axis intersect point. Well, if I drop this down like this, 
you can see how this moves this down until this intersection point right here intersects with the surface. And so you can use that to kind of get an idea of how these are going to drop inside of your model. One thing you need to be a little bit careful about is I've found this works best if this is at the bottom of your object. So like for example, this has that same point and if I use drop GC, it'll drop that until this intersects. But if I was to come in here and change my axis location to something like this, so it's no longer on the bottom corner anymore or along the bottom of this, it's now kind of in the middle. Well now if I run this extension, I start getting some kind of odd results where it kind of like jumps down and it doesn't necessarily drop. But if I was to go back in there and change this axis back to this corner and then drop this in here, this works just fine. And so you can kind of control the way that this drops by selecting the by selecting where the axis is located. So like for example, if I move that if I move that origin point over here, it's going to intersect based on this corner. If I was to undo that, move this back, and then do the same thing, it's going to drop it down to a different height based on this corner. So once you get kind of an idea of how this is using the object origin to place objects, you can use this to be more precise with the way that you drop things inside of your models. So that's where I'm going to end this video. If you're looking for more great extensions that have applications in architectural modeling, make sure to check out that architectural extensions guide at the sketchupessentials.com slash architecture extensions. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.